Well, in this next 10 minutes, we're going to be discussing my not favorite part of the acute inflammation chapter, the mediators. It's not that they're not interesting. It's just that they can't easily be put into the whole linear sequence of events. So we're just going to have to learn them one by one. And yes, there will be some rote aspect here, and I apologize. But let's talk about the main points of the classic mediators. We already talked about the common points over here. Now, let's talk about them individually. So let's talk about histamine, serotonin, complement, kinins, clotting factors, eicosanoids, nitric acid, PAF or platelet activating factors, cytokines, chemokines, lysosome constituents, free radicals, and neuropeptides. Let's talk about them and try to fit them in uh, logically, uh, which is going to be tough in their role in acute inflammation. The one that has always been uh, at the top of the list classically many years is histamine. Histamine is one of the most powerful natural vasodilators in the body. Its main uh, production is in mast cells. It's a vasoactive amine, and uh, by active, we're talking about dilating blood vessels. Here's its chemical formula. Here's a nice picture of it, and here are some granules inside of mast cells, which classically have uh, histamine and heparin. Some people say serotonin, but that's debatable, probably in rats, but probably not in humans. Histamine is the main substance to cause the vascular, early vascular effects of acute inflammation. The whole science of combating this natural process is called the pharmacology of antihistamines. Why we want to counteract what God gave us and took us millions or billions of years to develop, I don't know. But histamine is the main thing to cause vasodilatation. Serotonin is uh, sometimes said is also in mast cells, uh, but the main source of it is uh, from platelets and enterochromaffin cells. It's also called 5-hydroxytryptamine. Uh, and here's its picture and here's its three-dimensional thing. And it's also a vasodilatator, vasodilator, just like histamine, but it's a little more indirect. And remember, it also has an extreme uh, role in uh, brain chemistry as well. It's one of the main uh, neurotransmitters. And it is involved in the full spectrum of emotional responses, but its role in acute inflammation is just as powerful. Uh, unlike histamine, it does not uh, evoke, I'm sorry, let's start that all over again. Serotonin in, evokes nitric oxide synthetase, which is another reason or the main reason why it's a vasodilator as well, because nitric oxide is a powerful vasodilator. And the thing that triggers that off is serotonin. The complement system, which is a cascade of a whole wide variety of circulating plasma proteins. There's at least 20 of them. They all have names and numbers and letters, but they all fit into this acute inflammatory scheme. Uh, and even though it's a complex uh, cascade, the overall end product of it is lysis, L-Y-S-I-S of the cell membrane after the uh, establishment of that extensive uh, cascade. Um, complement fixation is the end of a stage of cascade of multiple chemical events similar to coagulation, which ultimately result in lysis of cell membranes. And hopefully, these are going to be bad cells, which have to be lysed, not good ones. But sometimes they lyse good ones, too, and that's a problem. The kinin system is another complex uh, sort of cascade system. Bradykinin is the key component. There's a bunch of other ones. Bradykinin is a nine amino acid polypeptide. It uh, also comes from circulating plasma. And in the inflammatory response, bradykinin does two things. 
it's a powerful smooth muscle contractor and it's non-vascular smooth muscle because if it contracted vascular smooth muscle the end result would be vasoconstriction wouldn't it it also is a direct pain producer some of the pain that's involved as if you remember the dolar from acute inflammation is from anatomic compression of surrounding structures and nerves but some of the pain is a direct result of the release of neuro of uh, I'm sorry of uh, bradykinin so bradykinin if you want to uh, read Wikipedia it's a potent endothelium dependent vasodilator it causes contraction of nonvascular smooth muscle and increases vascular permeability and also causes pain. You cannot talk about the acute inflammatory process without tying it into the coagulation process. They're all linked together. So, you know, clotting factors from coagulation are also circulating uh, plasma proteins. They result uh, in coagulation of blood, and they also result in the lysis of fibrin clot or fibrinolysis. And that is also tied in with acute inflammation as well. I wish I had the time to do it, but even if I did, I don't know the entire process. If you want to have a headache, you might want to see my worst kind of PowerPoint slide. Once again, you may have seen this a million times. We're talking about the intrinsic pathway here and the extrinsic pathway. The extrinsic pathway being uh, triggered off by tissue factor or trauma, whereas the in intrinsic pathway starts off with a damaged uh, surface, uh, activating uh, factor 12 into factor 12A. Here's your cascade from the left. Here's your cascade from the right. These are all uh, substances which are eventually going to result in the formation of a thrombin clot. Uh, once that thrombin clot is there, it can then be lysed by the process of fibrinolysis. And all of this fits in to the uh, inflammatory uh, epic as well. Icosamides. Well, those are all things that look like this. Here's your arachidonic acid. If you counted the little green balls, it would be 20. It's a 20 carbon uh, fatty, uh, fatty acid. It's part of cell membranes and the main classes of eicosanoids are prostaglandins, which include thromboxanes, leukotrienes, and lipoxins. And the substances which are enzymatically produced in these three uh, branches uh, cause the effects that we see in acute inflammation at many levels. And if you wanted to summarize it briefly and you just want to talk about prostaglandins and you didn't want to go through the crazy chemistry, remember prostaglandins produce pain, fever, and clotting. And if you wanted to remember that in an easy way, just remember what they do is counteracted by aspirin. Does aspirin reduce pain? Does aspirin reduce fever? Does aspirin prevent or reduce clotting? It certainly does. If you wanted to talk about the general categories of the leukotrienes in acute inflammation, the most important factors is that they're involved in chemotaxis, or the attraction of the neutrophils to the sites of injury after they leave the blood vessel. They are also involved in vasoconstriction, Remember, we talked about vasodilatation. Well, now we have vasoconstriction as a process uh, in acute inflammation as well. And they are also involved with increased permeability. Although we saw at the early stage of inflammation, vasodilatation resulted in increased permeability. With leukotrienes, you have vasoconstriction and increased permeability. And the third class of arachidonic acid derivatives or uh, leukotrienes is what we call lipoxins. And lipoxins are very easy to remember because they counteract the leukotrienes. So look, everything the leukotrienes do, the lipoxins undo. So let's stop here 
because we have to, and we'll get into it a few more later. Thank you very much.